Everybody. Here I am. Do you have to start over again? It's me, it's Coca Crystal. If I can't dance, you can keep your revolution. And uh, tonight is a very special night for many reasons. One, our guests are Judith Molina and Steve Ben Israel of the Living Theater here to talk about a play that is a kind of a 30 year reunion, a resurrection a replay of mysteries and other smaller pieces. There's no other band, they're just... Smaller. Is this mic on? Is that mic on? What do you mean, no? Well, can you? There's another mic behind. Oh, Jesus. Okay, here we go. Judith, this is for you. Thank you. Well, can we have another mic? You know, one of the great things about live TV... Is there a mic on? Is there, a mic on? Is there any mic on? No, not yet. No. Why don't you take this one, oh, Steve, and I can keep quiet for a few moments. Talk into her chest. Oh, very fine. Here, talk to my chest. What is that? Anyhow, here's what's going on. The Living Theater is doing another production of Mysteries and Smaller Pieces. Is that right? Very, very good. That's right. And it's down at Theater for the New City, which is like First Avenue and like 11th Street or 10th Street. 9th and 10th. 9th and 10th. I was close. We could do all of this in 10th. And it's fabulous. And you must go. And they're going to be there till September 25th. And one of the interesting things about this particular play is that they did this play 30 years ago. And that's fantastic. We did it when we were elves. And now we're done doing it as grown-ups. Right. I hope someone heard you say that. Yes, we are. Uh, Judith. It's like a it's like a historical recurrence. Yes. Yeah. And it speaks of of this the mystery of the recurrence. It's also a mystery. Which is also one of the mysteries, which is maybe the greatest of the smaller pieces, that it recurs. And that that cycle of energy that took place some 25, 30 years ago, it, it may seem to recede, but it's still there. It's been simmering all along, and I think we're ready to open up to it. In the New York Times, over there. <laughs> Can we pass that down? Oh, this is good. I doubt that. Uh, I mean, thank you very much. It says about you, Judith, in the New York Times last Wednesday, September 7th, that says, and when Judith Molina, who founded the group with her husband, Julian Beck, sits half lotus style before a candle, chanting for an end to social and economic injustice, you get the sense that on one level, she has never left that position since 1964. Imagine sitting cross-legged for 30 years. Well, I understand the, the metaphorical nature yes, of what this yes, guy I, said. I, I, yeah. I trust I do too, and I appreciate the, the, the Times is not always kind to me, which makes me especially appreciative what it is. Because I think maybe we're getting through. Well, this is all part of something that uh, Bob Fast calls keeping the spirit alive. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you are certainly uh, the greatest propounder of keeping the spirit alive, and we celebrate and salute you. I want to do a little more to keep the spirit alive. I want to go into the next step. 
Okay. However, maybe my wanting to go, if enough of us want to go into the next step, then the spirit will be alive until the next step. But what is the next step? Oh, the next step is the beautiful nonviolent anarchist revolution. Whoa! <laughs> okay. no, this isn't something. This isn't something that's going to occur on a certain date. Oh, okay. This is something that is There's ongoing. nothing in between that. Yeah. It's ongoing. Oh, okay. It's already happening. Uh, actually, yeah, uh, we we do have a, an opening date for this. We uh, we, <laughs> we have uh, we have called ahead to the future. Uh, uh, we, we called somebody who's been eating a lot of cauliflower for many years ago, it's the perfect, and we heard that this was the conditions were going to occur on September 13th. Yes. 2015, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's not a long wait, I think it's very close. Uh, the important thing is that to make sure, it's always good to work when you know you have a deadline. Exactly. But here we call it, it a gives life. you a goal. We call this a life line. <laughs> and so uh, that's that's we have a day. Yeah, well, you know the revolutionaries of of the year 2000, which is practically upon us, are still only what 13 years old. The huh? the, the people that are going to be the 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 student yes. revolution of of the of the year 2000 are now 13. are now about 13 years old, 12, 13, 14 wow. years old. So everything is possible in terms of the fact we're dealing with it. Uh, you know, we're dealing with a new wave of people. We're dealing with people that... Uh, well, they that are, are probably promising. than Generation Y, because they're younger than Generation X. Well, we, we, <laughs> we, we, booked, we booked the Times Square for 1999 for that oh, New, very New nice. Year's Eve party, and we're going to have a lot of these people ready at that time to do this dance. So, anyhow, this play is 30 years old, and it's playing at Theater for the New City, till September 25th, and with your kind of place, Steve, you are a co-director. Yes. And I didn't know you did direct it. Well, you know, we're always directing, you know. <laughs> yes, you go out every day and you say, boy, I'm going to direct myself here, direct myself <laughs> here. And then when you're working with other actors, oh, there are people who are directing themselves What direction here. am I in? And all of a sudden we have a specific direction to take here. And uh, But I spoke to one of the actors who was uh, there opening night in 1964 in Paris. Really? And he said to me, yeah, the mysteries was always my existential struggle against death, which means that every day when you go out there, it's like mm, <coughs> coming at you, and you're going, wait a minute, I'm going to keep my love. And all of a sudden, yeah, capital punishment, death, really death. Oh, yeah, I'm in the spirit of the mysteries the existential struggle against death. Because the guy that turned us on a lot way back said to us, you know, the objective was to rob death of its power. And this thing that it comes is. at us. So here in the theater, this play, okay. this play is like, it's taking you into this very, very, very deep, you know, uh, place of flowers. Can we show some pictures from, I don't think this does justice to what's going on there. Let's show them. We could show these. And Jean-Franco Montaigne took these yes, pictures, who we love. Yes. I don't know if anybody... Oh, there you are. Hi, darling. <laughs> and we'll get some of these. Anyhow, there's a quite a large cast, over 20 people in it. Yes, we've got 22 people on the stage. And, and uh, it's a very good company. It's one of the... How does someone get into this company? You know what I always say? To what do you always say? That? <laughs> People ask me that a lot, okay, and I always picture. say that the first sign of a person having, you know, the right qualities to uh -huh. be a member of the group is that they can figure out how to become a member of the group. Wow! If you can't figure out how to how to how to uh, attract the interest to this group, then you have no business being in it. How are you going to yeah. attract the uh, audience? That is the initiative so to figure out how to get in there and make it happen. Which that's is essentially what our plays are asking. How do we get in there and make it happen? So, there's another answer. The other answer is, <laughs> if there are 22 people in the group, right. you've got to make 22, you've got to find a way to make 22 people really feel they don't want to work without you, they don't want to live without you, they need you, they, they, they are inspired by you. 
they want to do the rest of their creative life with you. If you can make 22 people believe that, you're in. They are asking me to ask you to speak louder, I guess in a more theatrical yes, way. Yes, I will speak more theatrically. Turn up the volume in the control film. room. Come on, give us a break there. <laughs> so, you and Steve together have directed this play. Yes. And is this the first time you've directed together? Yes. And no, I've had Steve says, we're all directing I mean, you know, all the time. Oh, okay. You know, when this show first opened up, it, it almost was like a collective direction in some ways. It was sure like it was. A, um, that's what happened in these great creative moments. You know, the creative process is very mysterious. And certain times, all of a sudden, <laughs> it, it, oh, and I, I have to stay awake and make sure I get this all in. So, because I, and all of a sudden, there it is. And you have uh, this incredible, you know, creative experience. I mean, we have... We have now, as we have then, a very creative company. And there are times when the company is more creative and times when the company is preparing to become more creative. Uh, but uh, this is a very good moment, and that was a very good moment. Uh, which this, is this to play, say, uh, we sit down this, this, and this, generate the play. This, this, this play has, has, a, has a capacity to create a company. I, I, I went on Saturday night, by the way, and I love the play. And I guess that if I were to go every single night, it would be subtly different, or even maybe more than subtly different, on different nights. Like life. It's, it's very different. Yeah, there's room for... Oh, it's very different. You know, for, yeah. for many years, people would say to me, what do you do, performance <laughs> art? And I say, no, I do performance life. <laughs> and that's, that's the real difference here. Now, Steve, it says in the program that you've been associated with the Living Theater for 28 years. Yeah, darn truth and happy. <laughs> hey, what do you say there, buckaroo? <laughs> she, she, she keeps smoking. When did you first, well, I guess 28 years ago, how did you come in contact with the Living Theater? that I, in fact, was born the same year as the Living Theater. And flowering like it. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I sort of think of you as my mom. <laughs> well. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry. I'm well, let me just put it this way. I wish I had had a mom like you. Why, well, thank you. That would have been a lot different trip than the one well, you I was just, on. Or you could just go... Ma, I wipe out all those wishes. You must speak to my daughter about this. Here, Ma. Yes. <laughs> so, so the Living Theater, you've been with it 28 years, on I, and off? I've been associated. I've been uh, associated, associated yes. with many years. I'm, um, I, I, you know, and from time to time, uh, you know, one resurrects one's relationships in this mode of theater. Exactly. Actually, and I was very much reminded of my first association with you when I saw the play because there was sort of a, a dying scene amongst many, many people. And I remember in 1972 or thereabout, I came to you and said, help my women's action group, the Emma Goldman Brigade, do some makeup so we can look like we've been hit by napalm. And you gave us a workshop in not only the makeup, but actually how to die. <laughs> Yeah, I remember it was, it was me and Pamela yes. came to Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah it was somewhere in like Hunter or something. Somewhere. Yeah, it was some wild somewhere. and weird place. Yes, Steve has been a tremendous creative contributor to our uh, to our style, to our thinking, you, you to see, our if there was, if there, if there was 30 or 40 or 50 living theaters, then I could jump around. <laughs> you know, That's if I right. able to jump here, I give a jump there. Yeah. Well, That's what did right. you think about today's primer? <laughs> Oh, you're talking to the wrong guy. I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, you're not talking about any... Ma'am, you are not talking about any of any our boys and girls, so we don't kind of follow those people there. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, they're, they're, they're in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I mean, look at what the election is. It's, it, it's a promise 
that the, that the minority is willing to submit unquestioningly That's to right. the will of the majority. Right. What a terrible way to run something, to put the majority in charge and say the minority has to obey the will of the majority. That's right. Majority for all. This is a terrible idea. It's minority and the foundation of a golden ideal of democracy. That's right. Now something's wrong there. I, 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 so I, I, I didn't vote. I'm not, in, I'm, not in, I'm not interested in who's the different corrupt politicians in New Jersey. I don't give a shit about who is the corrupt politicians of New Jersey. I give a shit about a hey, school of people there trying to improve the quality of life. You want to talk about that? Yes, but I this guy's saying, this guy's full of shit, this guy's full of shit. You know, it's like, you know, the Ayatollah and George Bush calling each other an infidel. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're a fucking infidel. I'm a fucking infidel. Well, fuck no, are you fucking no, infidel? No. I'm a fucking infidel. That's why you're a fucking infidel. Well, fuck you, you fucking infidel. Fuck me, a fucking infidel. Well, fuck you, you fucking. You call me a fucking infidel. Well, fuck you, you fucking infidel. I'm a fucking infidel. Well, fuck you, you fucking. Infidel. That's incredible. You know, this infidel and a lot of other words are like going to be disappearing somewhere in the language also. Remember we talked about we, about the future, we thought we had sent somebody ahead in the year 2018. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, and uh, we found out that certain words like kill and maim were no longer needed in the dictionary. I mean, the old, the old dictionaries weren't burned. It's if you want to well, know about kill, not. look it up in the library, in the old dictionary, because in the new dictionary we don't have that more. We don't have infidels, we don't have kill, kill and maim and all these other things. A thousand words for love. A new, and we're going to recycle all those old dictionaries. That's what we need. You'd yes, be amazed yes. the amount of, wor amount of words that are going to be taken out of the dictionary in the future. Now, Steve, at the play, although I don't want to get too personal here, there was a fellow who met you outside, and he said that he had known you in, like, 1965 in Berlin. Yeah. Now, that's incredibly hip. What were you doing there then? Uh, doing theater. Really? Doing theater. Yes. And trying to get rid of the Berlin Wall. Uh-huh. We yeah. were, we Took were. Took you a long time. We were waiting against that well, you know, for a while I, I, there. You know, it was like, we, we tried, we tried some very mysterious ways how to do that, you know, and, uh, Yeah, well, it finally worked. The theater, you know, um, the thing is that, I remember, uh, some of us went to, uh, West Berlin and did this thing on, on the wall, on the wall. Yeah. And then we went to East Berlin and did this, something from the other side of the wall because you got to wiggle it yeah. from both sides or else it doesn't really mean shit, you know, and, uh, <laughs> Well, you know, we, we, we have had luck in being able to you know and having the means to go where the action is so that like we were in we were in paris the night of may 13th in 1968 you know yeah. right there right in the barricades well, taking the odeon theater uh, right that in the heart of it uh so that we went to brazil in a much darker sense there during the military dictatorship sure. Because what that year was, was that? Uh, 1970-71. Uh, because that's where it seemed to be important to be. And we went to Pittsburgh when the steel industry right. was was self-destructing. Uh, uh, we went to Italy when all the uh, when all the uh, factories were on strike and played inside the inside the struck factories. Many such many such adventures we were able to go to the heart of something right now we're talking about going to sarajevo really there some plans being made for us to go there and Whoa. do some work there uh so that again and again we want to be where where something's moving where something's happening that's why we, we want to continue our our play against the death penalty that's why they're called the movement. oh yes tell us about that that's that, a very interesting yeah. work that uh uh, it occurs whenever there's it someone occurs to be executed. When there's, an, when there's an execution, and at the hour of the execution, we're on the street in three parts of the play. The first part saying, don't do it. Right. And we talk about this person, and we talk about his mother and his right. life and what he's accused of. And, and, and we make the audience feel that this is a human being in great trouble. And uh, then... The second part is like a vigil countdown of the last yes. half hour or hour of wow. this person's life wow. with a clock waiting for death. Wow. And it's very Artodian. It's the only play, I think, in which the protagonist really dies. Yeah, yeah. Really and dies. And it's where horrifying. The concept it's, it's, it's of very um, horrifying. not in my name comes in. 
Well, we're saying that, that, that yeah. this is done under the law. Yeah. This is for a proved murder yeah. for the people, yeah. but not in our name. Right. Right. And then we have a very beautiful third part. Yeah. In which we try to reverse the cycle of violence. And we thought a long time about how can we do that in the yeah. face of this guy's just been killed. Right, what do you do? We go out into the audience and we touch some stranger in Times Square and we say, I swear to you that I will never kill you. Okay. Can you promise me the same? Yes, I can. All right, we've reversed, <laughs> to this degree, we've reversed the cycle of violence. Absolutely. So that, we, that, that's the it beginning. It goes for you too, Steve. Okay. The beginning, the beginning is, an, a, is, is a moment of compassionate understanding with one other soul, and it that's the there. beginning Absolutely. of the reversal. Whoa, cool. Now, do we dare, you know, sometimes we get some calls, and I know you've been on the show before, and we've gotten some calls where people have known who you were and had intelligent questions and have sort of brought the whole thing forward. Other times, and vice versa. Can I, can, I, can I just throw something here about capital please, punishment? Please. You know, I, I saw Brando's book in the store today, you know? Uh-huh. And it's this, you know, I don't know if it's in the book, but I remember this this vigil for Carol Chesman way back. Yeah. And he was there. And I remember this picture of, of Brando standing there as Brando, you know, who, who he was in those days and stood there, you know, in support of, of this guy being allowed to live. Yes. And, uh, and, and just, you know, I know since 1972, 46 men in America who would have been put to death uh, because of stays, uh, uh, for various reasons, including one recently they found out and one guy who was supposed to be executed in Florida, it wasn't him. Well, yeah. Uh, so, 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 yeah, sure. So, it's, um, you know, yeah. Okay. Thanks for sharing that with us. Now we're going to see if these viewers are paying attention. Hello, are you paying attention? Hi. I'm calling from Howell, West Howell. How do you do? How are you? I enjoyed your show. I just tuned in. I've seen you before, and uh, I listened to you with interest. Uh, the, and uh, I, you. Pardon me? And I, you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> what, I, what I'd like to ask your guests is, first of all, I'm interested in their work. They seem like they're very interesting people, very passive people. They seem that way. Uh, beautiful people. We're all, quote, on the line, rejects from the old bohemian generation, quote, on the line. I don't know about oh. the reject part. Well, I, uh, <laughs> well, maybe I should rephrase it, but where can we see your work? Oh, glad you asked. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly where are you... Oh, good, okay. Mysteries in Smaller Pieces is now playing at the Theater for the New City from Thursdays to through Sunday nights until the 25th of... Is there a phone September. number they could call for that place? Yes. yes. It's 254-1109 if you want to, like, go down to this theater. Okay. Okay, thank you for I'm calling. I'm very interested. Thank you very much. I hope you'll get a chance to see it because it's... it's it's interesting and fun, and you'll be glad you did. I'm going to bring a group with me, I promise. Excellent. Right. Very nice. Thank you. Bye now. Okay. A call from West Harlem. Hello. You're on the air. Line four. No? Not to do that. Okay. We're going to look for another call and tell you that next week we have a really incredibly exciting and interesting show because Judith and... And Steve are going to be coming back. Are we coming back? And, and Mike Chance will be yes, here. Yes, we'll do the same thing. That'd be fun. It'll Great. be so Great. much fun. Great. Now, do we have another call? Who knows? Uh, I had, you know, there were so many great moments. I can't, you know, say every little part that I liked about the play. But there were, it was just... Can I say something about this piece? Would you? When this piece, I don't want to go into the how it all came together, but when this piece... Uh, began when all of a sudden one of the actors said you know we'll put Tom on stage and let the audience look at him for 10, 11, 12 minutes and just become one with him and then he said something else and then somebody said something else and then somebody said something, something else and it just kind of grew and it grew and it grew and then when we played it 
we, I think only then did we know what we had. Yeah. Oh. You know, and, and, and uh, oh, that's and, very and, powerful. And, 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 you know, and then the first night in Paris in '64, you know, the audience stayed for like an hour. And the audience took all the chairs and piled it up to the ceiling. Really? And came over to me and said, "Man, <laughs> man, that's just like blew me away." It did. And I said, "Blew you away? <laughs> blew you away? Uh, yeah, am am really. I standing up?" <laughs> Let's see what they're saying on the phone. Hello. Hello. Hi. How you doing? This okay. is Rosada calling. This is what? Rosada. It's one of the one of the actors in Mysteries and Smaller Pieces. Oh hi. Hello. How you doing? Hi. Hey. Uh, you were great. What's that? You, you were great. You know I have this guy. I don't think you know, but that's really bad. Thing. Well, if you were in the play, you were great because I thought everyone was great. Thanks. You're best actor yourself. Oh yeah, thanks. I like your shape. <laughs> Thank you. Are you covering up your eyes? Yes, I am. I'm glad you pointed that out. I'll show you why, briefly. It says... Okay, wait. What's up? Okay. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. So why did you They really are. Um, anyway, I'm back. I'm okay. good to see you guys on the, on the air there. Get a last little... Are you getting a little rest before your next performance? Am I what? Getting a little rest. Yeah, I'm playing the guitar. All right. Hey. Are you the person? Does he play guitar? No, no. Okay. All right, let me uh, go back to playing the guitar. Teach myself up there. Thanks for calling. Yeah. All right. See? There, there are people there who know. You know, I've just written a, a play myself. It's, it's very short. It's like seven seconds it's ridiculous it's like because you perform that play now yeah, I, I, I want to do it i want to do it with 100 actors it would still be 15 minutes <laughs> you know it's like uh it, i it, uh, every actor comes out and they go one at a time to be a mensch ah that is the answer <laughs> <laughs> and, and they walk off slowly, and then a woman comes on. That's and she gets, oh, I want to. She gets the purple light. She wants the purple light, whatever. Yeah. She does the same line, walks off, and one after another, you know. Yes. And I think if we could get, you know, certain well, politicians, mentioned. certain politicians, we can, we're going to try and get maybe Great. as the uh, 175th person. And there are from, so many variations. Well, we're going to try and some people from uh, from Yugoslavia. Exactly. It's a, Translation. It's a, it's a kind of training. We're going to send the leadership from all these countries at war to come in for this men's training we're going to have. It's Let's free. take another call. Do we dare? We're doing so well. Risk it. Hello? Hello? It's you. Hello. Hi. Hi. I was curious as to um, where you got your inspiration from. These people? Yeah. Good. Not me. No, no. <laughs> you know where you get your inspiration from? You get it from all the people going way back to the first people who all throughout history said, wait a minute. I think there's something else. Wow. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What is, oh, shit. Oh, shit. There's all these people who've been going, oh, wow, all through history, and they've passed on this, wow. It's human. It's consciousness. It's compassion. It's respect. It's understanding. It's responsibility. It's hope. It's mutual aid. You have all, to all, all the, all, all, all the best, all the best things that have been handed down to us, you know. And this is this is this is what our inspiration is. And you'll find it in every culture in history, and every country has those people who have said, "Hey, yes, <laughs> thank you. That was a great question and a better answer. Great answer. Both. It's time to dance. Thank you, lovely people, for being here. I'll see you next week, and you too. Uh oh, look at this. Don't let the world